We're going to talk about pre-season training. Now, this is a question that comes up quite a lot of times on the channel, particularly from athletes from the US and Canada who have their off-season break before going to college. In the UK, things are slightly different in that our season lasts until September, and then we take a few weeks off before we recommence winter training. In the States, however, you can often get a longer period of time off from training. So what should you do during that pre-season, that break between competitive performance and going back into winter training? Well, I believe that you should keep active and that activity should involve some more specific track and field, long jump, triple jump and sprint drills in our case activity. So why the need for that activity? Well, you don't want to lose the specific fitness that you've gained from the season. You'll have got faster, you'll have got more powerful. So why do you want to lose those gains by being relatively inactive and not doing specific movements? Secondly, you want to keep doing some specific movement for injury avoidance. Okay, let's consider the first reason for being active and that's maintaining and not losing the condition that you've developed. If you do take a long break, then potentially your ability to express power will decrease and you're going to have to spend longer getting it to return to those competitive in-season levels. So if you try to maintain some semblance of speed and power during off-season, when you return, you're going to be at a higher level than what you were if you didn't do anything. Now, I will say in passing that the training method, the training program, the shape of the program is going to have a effect on how you transition into the winter training period. If, like me, your coach uses an undulating periodization or block periodization methodology, then you'll be hitting the ground running when you go back to training. You'll be doing acceleration work, takeoff work, drop jumps, etc., relatively powerfully and quickly from the get go. If, however, you're using more of a traditional base building periodization approach, then the potential is for the coach to give you more basic general training in order to prepare you for the more powerful and quicker material elements that will follow. As you'll hopefully know by now, if you're a regular channel viewer, I prefer always keeping the key elements of long jump, triple jumps and sprints on the boil throughout the whole year. So of course, sprinting, takeoff work, etc. Therefore, my athletes need to come back to training in October for us ready and able to do those types of activities. Yes, of course, I will dial them down a little bit. They're not going to sprint 60 meters flat out on day one of training, but I may expect them to do some 20 and 30 meter acceleration runs at 90%, and then we build from that. So that should give you an idea of what I'm expecting my athletes to have in terms of preparedness when they return. So they need to have maintained that specific condition necessary to be able to perform to that intensity. So my athletes over their break will be doing basic drills, standing in place sprint drills, some strides and some light drop jumps. They're not properly training, I hasten to add, but they will be doing these types of activities two to three times a week, but again to reiterate on a casual basis, half an hour, 40 minutes, and I believe that that will keep the condition there to a level that will enable them to kick on very quickly when they return to training. So if you've got to work on rear side mechanics, strengthening up the posterior chain, then hip extension exercises, in place hamstring exercises, or rather I should say sprint drills where you take the leg back from behind the body, behind the hip to in front. Think about what you need to work on and you can focus on those areas during the off season. Again, I'm not saying that you should do it full on, but 
you should be aware of areas that would benefit from more attention and you can focus on those without the distraction of the generality of the training program. You can isolate exercises, body parts, movements that you feel you need to specifically work on. I will however say at the outset that it is important that you do take a rest from competing and training. Your body does need time to recover and importantly so does your mind. You'll have been full out, full on for nine months potentially and you do need to get away from track and field athletics for a period of time. But as I've said, I don't think you should totally move away and forget everything. You still need to keep simmering, keep going along, doing some activity because you will benefit in the long run from doing that. If you'd like to find out more about Freelap, drop me an email. So, as a guide, if you've got six to eight weeks of time off between end of season and start of the season, I would recommend do something along these lines. Take a week to ten days off, and in that time, relax away from track and field, do some walking, some stretching, some mobility, play some other sports at a low intensity. Then after 10 to 14 days, start to work on your weaknesses. So decide what areas need to be worked on and introduce some exercises that you believe will be of benefit. Then after those two weeks, start to introduce some light running drills and some runs and some plyometrics. All this, I will say, to two, three times a week only, 30, 40 minutes. Then they should take you up to the time when you're going to start training again and you'll be ready to start training. Hopefully the information that I've given you in this video will help you organise your pre-training and give you some reasons for keeping your track and field training going during that period, albeit on a much reduced level. If you have any questions on the subject matter content of this video then do drop me an email or leave a comment in the section below. And if you're still competing, then of course, good luck with that. And do subscribe to the channel and consider becoming a channel member where you'll gain access to exclusive content. Hello and welcome to Coach Athlete Members video number 10. In this video, we're going to take a look at training transfer. That's selecting exercises that you think will improve performance and working out considering whether they actually do. As a coach it can be daunting looking at all the exercises, weights, plyometrics, sprint drills, jump drills etc that are out there and then trying to work out which ones to utilise and how to utilise them in your training programme. Exercise selection is crucial to training transfer and you can identify a continuum between general exercises and more specific exercises in terms of their transference potential. To become a channel member, go to the channel's homepage and click on join to see the offers where you'll get lots of exclusive content.